So this is the remains of the first boat I ever built. Was a proa. I went on a trip with it, but um, I spent more time working on it on the beach. Um, it was actually really good for meeting locals because people could come up and talk to me. Um, it's built for entirely from salvaged wood and then some epoxy. Didn't know anything about boat building at this point, but it um, it's actually still a lot of good boat here. That, yeah, that's broken. That's easy to fix. Um, there's not very much, there's no rot in the hull itself. There was a few bits um, glued on that had rotted and um, I knocked them off recently, not home recently. Um, this is the worst part that attaches to the outrigger. I had, um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back together, put a deck on it. My plan at the time after the trip <coughs> was actually to um, put a deck on it and take it to Kafia and do some more sailing. So it's funny we've gone, um, it's come full circle now. how bad the glue join was. There wasn't enough glue and I probably didn't clamp it tight enough. Probably I just didn't have enough clamps to do this bit close to, um, to do this bit tightly. I actually can't remember if I used any clamps or if I just screwed it. There was one patch of rot under the foredeck. Quite a few things have been living in there. When I cut the hole for the inspection port, I probably never sealed the edge. And then I left it out in a place where probably it filled with water. Something like that. Anyway, of interest is that although this broke, when this, where this broke off, it was the wood that broke and the epoxy is still good. It's glued in a few pads to strengthen the, um, the spots where it seemed weak and now I want to find the center so I've measured it already slightly shorter than two sets of plywood because of the scar check out the measurements of the corners are the same to the millimeter and then measure from the other end And then just decide what the hell is close enough and then mark those points. Okay, I've laid the hull out on some plywood. I'm going to trace around it. Now, the hull at the widest point is 45 centimeters wide. So I want to do a centimeter extra on either side um, so I don't, you know, and I'll cut it off later. Doesn't hurt to double check. Set the hull back up and set the deck on it. So I'll just trace around this piece on the rest of the plywood. Cut up.
I knew I didn't need all the tools that I normally use to do this. Um, so I just put what I thought I'd need, but in the rush I forgot a bunch of stuff, such as paintbrushes. So now I'm going to improvise. Just going to use a squeegee that I improvised. I'm going to put a pad of solid epoxy in here at the end so that I can drill a hole through there. Similar to how this kayak is. This is the wood I want to use for the, for the rig and the cross beams. It was growing here, but it was threatening the garage. Got some splitting tools and uh, this log, this, this bit, I'm going to try and split it down here. There should be enough for, for um, both arcas. Here's a tool I made recently. The handle's from the same tree as this. Uh, this is a leaf spring from a piece of farm equipment that was rusting away down the back of the farm. And uh, this is a bicycle in a tube. The blade is attached at a, a knot because it gives you something to tie onto and that's where the hardest wood is. And it's just lashed on but then the blade butts up into a piece of wood so use it like this Grinding these flat so I can glue the deck on. The deck has had two coats of epoxy and it's still a little bit tacky, which is perfect because it means the um, next layer of glue, anything goes to this, will chemically bond. So I'm going to dry fit it onto this and then uh, screw it to get screws in position. When I glue it, there's going to be good gluing surfaces on all of these pieces. So plenty of glue on there. And then I'm going to screw it down and that's going to hold it in place. Then I'm going to flip it up and then I'm going to put a fillet of glue all along here and maybe um, tie that around with ropes or bungees or something and that should give a seal, that should glue it along the edge and then I'll grind off the excess and put a tape around it too and that should be good enough. I've done a dry fit. It's Christmas right now so I made a minimalist nativity. Mary is a drill and Joseph is a 
anti grinder and baby Jesus is part of epoxy. It's appropriate that Jesus is epoxy because with epoxy, epoxy forgives all of your sins. The faithful can enter into the kingdom of heaven of boat building, sailing the boat that you build. Now I'm going to clamp it down using a trucker stitch. Trucker stitch is basically what they used to use before ratchet straps were invented. Now I like to do mine with a bowline at one end and an alpine butterfly at the other. Here's a boat line. Now you can do the other end with, you know, any knot that gives you a, a loop and an end of a rope, or on the side of a rope. But Alpine Butterfly is the best knot for that. So it's a rock, it's a climbing, it's a mountaineering knot for, um, you can have a line and then uh, attach people to it. So you put a loop off the side. And you could put a lot of tension on this rope and still undo it again easily. Also, you can tie it when you only have access to the middle of the rope. You don't need an end. It's also good if a uh, rope has been chafed, you can take that part of the rope out. Incidentally, this rope was the rope that Imagine's crossbeams were lashed down with. Little wooden washers like this is definitely the best way to um, protect the surface if you're going to need to screw through it to clamp it. Um, but I call these Caltrop style because you really do not want to stand on them uh, believe me so if you're going to do it this way make sure you take them out Now putting a radius in the edge with the plane. It's not for aesthetics. It's so that the um, fiberglass tape will go around the edge for strength. The next step is putting fiberglass tapes along the edge. We're going to submerge these in epoxy and then unroll them along the edge. The easy way to do this is just completely pour the epoxy onto the fiberglass because we want to make sure the fiberglass is completely wetted out. 
and I found submerging it to be a reliable way of doing that. There was a bit of epoxy left over, so I'm going to quickly fix these. Originally, I tied the ackers through holes in the in the bulkhead, but because I've digged it over, I no longer have access to that. So I'm going to make flashing tie down points like this. just remembered my plan to um, have a hole here. Um, unfortunately I can't quite remember how far back I put the filler, so I'm just going to have to guess and hope I get it right. So according to this it's a 3.3 i.e. 9 and a bit square meters tarpaulin. Now I want to make a, a triangular sail that's six square meters. So what's about to get it out of this with some sewing? Um, it's going to be four meters a side equilateral triangle. So I'm going to have to cut some bits and sew it back. Okay, that's pretty much a triangle. I've stretched out the sail, taped it down at the end with duct tape, and then um, taped it a few spots and had to line it up. It's got a slight curve that way, so it should have a bit more belly in the middle of the sail, but who knows, I'm just really making things up. <laughs> 